Good evening, Prasad, and you're watching Kini News. A multi-million ringgit contract, family ties and a defamation suit. It all comes together as the country's most intense political rivalry continues with Prime Minister Anwar Ibrahim defending himself in Dr. Mahathir Mohamad's defamation suit. Prime Minister Anwar Ibrahim cited a 214 million ringgit contract awarded to a company allegedly connected to former Prime Minister Dr. Mahathir Mohamad as part of his defence against a defamation suit filed by Mahathir. Anwar claimed justification by highlighting the fibre optic contract awarded to Opcom Cable Sanerian Burhat. He stated that Mahathir's family members, including his sons, Mirzan, Mogzani, Mukris, and Mukris' wife, Nur Zita Zakaria, served as directors of Opcom Cables. Anwar alleged that Mahathir, as Prime Minister and Finance Minister at the time, had control over the Minister of Finance Incorporated. He asserted that the government's golden share enabled key decisions in telecom, which engaged in direct negotiations with Opcom for fibre optic supply. Additionally, Anwar mentioned Kunchana Petroleum, which he claims belonged to or is controlled by Mokzani. He pointed out that despite being newly established in 2001 without a known track record, Kunchana Petroleum obtained a major fabrication license from Petronas when Mahathir was Prime Minister, suggesting a bailout. Anwar argued that Mahathir's lawsuit has ulterior motives, as Mahathir never took legal action against publications or prominent individuals who made similar allegations. Anwar highlighted that Mahathir's civil action was initiated only after he became Prime Minister to lead the unity government. Anwar claimed there is no basis for Mahathir's lawsuit as the allegedly defamatory statement could not lower, injure or reduce Mahathir's reputation in the mind of the right-thinking members of society. You may be wondering how DAP, a party with over 40 seats in Parliament, has so few posts in Cabinet. It's a question on the minds of the party's grassroots and there are rumours some are not happy about this. According to Anthony Locke, it's all about playing the right cards at the right time. DAP Secretary General Anthony Locke reiterated the party's acceptance of having only four Cabinet posts, despite holding over 40 seats in Parliament. Speaking on the BFM Breakfast Grill, Luck addressed concerns about the grassroots dissatisfaction with the numbers, highlighting the party's understanding of the political landscape and the limitations they faced when the government was formed. Luck emphasised that the cabinet appointments fall under the Prime Minister's prerogative and DAP respects this decision. Quality over quantity, Locke stressed the importance of performance and contribution to nation-building in the allocated portfolios. Acknowledging the polarised political environment, particularly regarding racial and religious issues, Locke expressed concern about its impact on the country's unity. According to Locke, DAP took certain steps back to ensure that the government can function. In order for a multiracial country such as Malaysia to prosper, he said there can be no other option for a Prime Minister candidate aside from Anwar Ibrahim right now. According to Lok, the current government upholds Malaysia's diverse fabric and remains committed to fostering a multiracial society. For DAP, making the government work under these principles is imperative. Online gambling has been growing in recent years and the authorities can't do anything about it because powerful people are said to be involved, offering protection to syndicates. Home Minister Saifuddin Nasution Ismail acknowledged the presence of political patronage in illegal online gambling, making it challenging for the government to address the issue. He emphasised that this is a global problem not unique to Malaysia. Political figures may shield players from enforcement actions or leak information to help them evade raids. Untuk saya berdiri di sini mengatakan Malaysia ini aktiviti online uh, illegal online gambling ini bebas daripada political patronage orang akan ketawakan kita. Ya, memang wujud elemen naungan politik ke atas uh, players ini ada. Affirmatively ada. Itu yang dipertua. Dari situlah datang influence dan protection. Dari situlah datang corruption and bribery. He said this in response to Sungai Buloh MP R. Ramanan's question about patronage in tackling illegal online gambling. Safran also highlighted that the current laws are inadequate to handle the evolving nature of illegal online gambling platforms. 
He emphasized the need to amend the laws to empower enforcement agencies in effectively addressing the issue. Safarin intends to discuss this matter with the Prime Minister to explore avenues for legal amendments. The government has been talking about introducing targeted fuel subsidies for some time now. However, if you're wondering why it's not here yet, it's simply because it's complex and the government hasn't figured out how it's going to do it. Prime Minister Anwar Ibrahim revealed today that the government is facing challenges in devising a suitable mechanism for targeted subsidies on diesel and petrol. Speaking to reporters during a visit to hawker stalls in Kuala Lumpur, he explained the complexities involved in implementing such subsidies compared to electricity subsidies. Tapi pelaksanaan itu tidak mudah. We are working on it. Implementation, the mechanism, will you be working like maybe uh, IRB identify? No, we are, we, we are actually there's a team working on it now. There have been some proposals, but we are not very convinced in, in terms of its effectiveness during the implementation. Very complex. Unlike electricity, you know, you know the house, you know the factory, so it's okay. But the, the diesel is difficult. Okay, the car, but um, sometimes the driver, sometimes you know it's difficult. Sometimes they can take from a different. A small car and then pass on to the big car. So all these things have been studied. Anwar emphasized the importance of ensuring that only those who genuinely need assistance receive the subsidies. No, that one we have announced. Targeted subsidy means the subsidy must be for the people who need it, not for the very rich. Sekarang ini, katalah subsidy tabung haji, paling kaya pun dapat. Subsidy elektrik, paling kaya pun dapat. Orang lain, 90% yang layak sini sebab bagilah begitu juga ni diesel kami minyak orang Mercedes Rolls Royce semua dapat subsidi the existing subsidy mechanisms for diesel and petrol benefit all segments of society including high income earners who drive luxury vehicles the government aims to rectify this issue through the implementation of targeted subsidies Earlier this year, the government announced its intention to revamp the subsidy system, aiming for a more focused approach that ensures subsidies reach only those who truly deserve them. According to Deputy Finance Minister Ahmad Mazlan, this targeted approach could result in potential savings of up to 17 billion ringgit by excluding the high income group from diesel and petrol subsidies. Ever look at a nurse and think their uniforms are too tight? Most likely not because if you're at the hospital in the first place, you have more concerning things to think about. But it's something Kwantan MP Wan Razali Wan No has thought about. In his debate on the health white paper in the Day One Rakia today, he highlighted the issue of female nurses' uniforms being too tight and not compliant with Sharia standards. He questioned whether the dress code for women nurses could be more relaxed and less westernized. Dato' Andy Pertua, Saya ingin juga membangkitkan etika pemakaian jururawat wanita iaitu kebanyakannya berpakaian ketat dan menampak bentuk badan di mana ianya tidak patuh syariah. Saya ingin bertanya adakah kita masih berterusan mahu mengikut acuan barat dalam etika pemakaian ini? Apakah ianya tidak boleh diubah dan diberi kelonggaran? For the third time, the court has allowed Rosma Mansour's passport to be returned to her temporarily, so she can visit Singapore. Here's more on that. The Court of Appeal has allowed for the temporary release of Rosma Manso's passport so she can travel to Singapore to visit her daughter, Noriana Najwa Najib. A three-person Court of Appeal bench chaired by Judge P. Ravindran this morning granted the application by Rosma's counsel, Jagjit Singh. This came as there were no objections from the prosecution. The passport was released today to allow Rosma to fly to Singapore until July 7th. Rosma's passport was being held by the court pending the disposal of the appeal against her graft conviction and sentencing. This is the third time that she has been granted temporary release of her passport. The first was granted on October 15th, 2021, when Rosma was still undergoing a corruption trial linked to the Education Ministry's 1.25 billion ringgit solar hybrid energy project. The Kuala Lumpur High Court allowed the temporary release of a passport so she could go to Singapore to give support to Doriana, who was about to give birth. On March 21st this year, the Court of Appeal also allowed Rosma to have a passport back temporarily so she could be in Singapore to visit her daughter and grandson who was unwell. 
And that is all from me today. For more stories, you can go to kinetv.com. You can also follow us on Instagram, Twitter, YouTube, and Facebook for the latest news updates. If you'd like to support independent media, do consider subscribing to malaysiakini.com. I'm Prasad. Thank you for watching.